In this video, I'm gonna share with you the three simple habits I use to go from this to this as a busy executive and mom of two with pretty much no time. These three habits have been life-changing for me because I used to be the type of person that had every excuse in the book as to why I couldn't be fit. I also struggled with binge eating and overeating, but then once I realized my life could be much easier simply by being a more fit, confident, and energetic version of myself, I decided to figure out how to make this health thing attainable for a busy person like me with goals outside of fitness. What I discovered is that the way to make something feel almost effortless is that it has to become a habit, kind of like brushing your teeth. Everyone watching this probably has a different way of getting the job done of brushing their teeth. Some of you might do it in the shower. Some of you might do it first thing in the morning. Some of you might do it right after you have your coffee. But either way, once the habit of brushing your teeth is established, it becomes effortless to you and you barely have to think about it anymore. So habit number one is to eat enough protein, and you've heard this before, but chances are you might not be doing it consistently because of one of three reasons. Reason number one, you don't understand why you need to do it or how important it is. Number two is you're uncertain as to how much you should be eating. Or number three is because you haven't figured out how to consistently get enough protein as part of the busy lifestyle that you live. So number one, why is protein so important? Simply put, if you're not getting enough protein, your body will think you're hungry and drive you to overeat on calories in a search for protein. I'm gonna share some of my favorite studies below if you wanna get in the weeds on this conclusion. But anecdotally, this is a huge reason why I see busy executives overeat at the end of long, stressful days. What they do is they intermittent fast and they just kind of eat what's available to them throughout the day. And then once they get home, they're ravenously hungry and they just find themselves eating whatever they can when really what's going on is their body is searching for protein. For example, this is a client we work with over at Metrics Health. She's a mom of two. She runs a quarter of a billion dollar fund. She'd been under eating protein for a while. And once we built in the habit of making sure she was getting enough protein every single day, this was the result at the end of 30 days, not changing anything else. Here's another example of a healthcare executive and mom where all we did in the first 30 days was help her establish the habit of getting enough protein. And as you can see, her body composition has changed just as a result of that one habit. The second reason why eating enough protein in itself is a very smart strategy is because protein has been shown to preserve or even grow muscle mass in certain conditions or muscle tone for the dainty ladies that are scared of building the muscles. This means that in certain conditions, you don't even have to exercise. As long as you're eating enough protein, you're gonna build that muscle tone. You could just be sitting on Zoom calls, and just by way of getting enough of the right sources of protein, you can build muscle mass in certain conditions. That's insane to me. To be clear, I'm not saying don't exercise. I'm just explaining why eating enough protein is such a high leverage habit. Because when you combine the habit of eating enough protein, with the right types of exercise, which we're gonna talk about in habit number three, then boom, the results are amazing. One study found that eating enough protein with a particular amino acid called leucine was advantageous to this building of muscle tone. Here's a chart showing the leucine content per 100 grams of each protein source. Notice that you can find all of these protein sources pretty much ready to go at your local Costco or your local grocery store, meaning the total time that it would actually take you to consume consume this protein is the amount of time it takes you to order it with a few clicks on your smartphone from like your local delivery service and basically just open the package. Not as much time as you think. I'm not saying packaged foods are better than meal prepping. What I'm saying is if you are a busy individual with goals outside of fitness like myself, you can make this work for you. So for all you guys saying that I don't have enough time to meal prep and that's the reason why I can't be fit, problem solved. It's like, boom, boom, I'm done. The second reason people don't implement the protein habit consistently is that there's uncertainty about how much protein they need to eat. So here's a sliding scale of how much protein you should be eating, and I'll link the studies below that allowed us to come up with this conclusion. If you're looking at this chart and you're like, Juliana, I don't know what my body fat percentage is, I'm gonna link a calculator you can use below for free. All you need is a tape measure to measure certain points of your body, and it'll give you a decent estimate of what your body percentage is. And then you can use this chart here to understand where you need to be on this sliding scale. If you're in the athlete category, you definitely wanna be in the lean end of protein. If you're obese, obviously go on the higher body fat end of the spectrum. So the way I learned to get in enough protein on a daily basis is I started to track what I ate for a week using an app like MyFitnessPal. 
And once I started tracking what I was eating, I realized, wow, I am majorly under eating on protein. If you're super busy throughout the day and you don't have time to log your food or establish that habit, what you might wanna do is just take a picture of what you eat and at the end of the day, before you go to bed or before you turn on the TV or whatever activity you find rewarding at the end of a long day, before you do that, make sure you log what you ate for the day so you can get a sense as to how much protein you ate. Another thing I found helpful is the concept of implementation intentions which have been shown to be extremely helpful in getting people to implement new habits. At the end of the day, you stand in front of your fridge with your app, like a MyFitnessPal, and you plan how the hell are you gonna get in whatever grams of protein that you need to hit tomorrow. This whole process probably takes about five minutes for an absolute newbie, and less than that for somebody who's been doing this for a few weeks. What about meals out, Juliana? Or I go to a lot of client dinners. How do I make sure I get enough protein? My rule of thumb is to hit 80 to 90% of your total daily protein intake before you go to the dinner. This way, the likelihood that you will not get enough protein as a result of the dinner will be low. Habit number two is to eat enough calories. There's this common misconception that the less calories you eat, the better and faster you'll be able to lose fat. Well, that's true in the short term, but in the long term, that totally backfires. And yes, this is also true for all the folks that are going on GLP-1s, thinking that there will be no long-term consequence to cutting their calories so low. Take, for example, this study on the Biggest Loser participants, which illustrates this point pretty well. What's the biggest loser, you ask? Well, back in the day, there was this reality TV show where they took obese contestants and they put them in a competition to see who could lose the most weight the fastest. So these obese participants were incentivized to create the most dramatic calorie deficit possible through calorie restriction and exercise in order to be coined the biggest loser and win a nice cash prize. Well, everything went according to plan on the show and these contestants lost life-changing, dramatic amounts of weight. Six years later, a bunch of scientists went in and decided to do a study on the effects of this dramatic weight loss. And what they found was fascinating. Not only did most people gain back a majority of the weight, some people even gained more weight than they originally started with. And in pretty much all of these cases, every single participant had slowed their metabolic rate beyond what their predicted metabolic rate should be for somebody at that size, meaning that if they wanted to take off the weight again, they would have a significantly harder time doing so. Maybe even it would feel impossible. Or take, for example, popular YouTuber Stephanie Buttermore, who was in a constant state of ignoring her hunger cues, and she would do these 10K a day calorie challenge just to satiate her hunger. These 10K challenges helped her hunger and satiety hormones in the short term but ultimately they were not enough because she had spent so much time ignoring these cues. Ultimately what she had to do is go all in, gain a bunch of weight and be super uncomfortable for a period of time to reset her hunger hormones. So if you don't want either of those situations to be your reality and you still want to get fit, you need to learn how to eat enough calories. One of the things I've noticed about our executive clients at Metrics Health is that a lot of them don't eat enough calories. So for example, here's a 40 something woman and a technology executive and mother. And when she came to us, she was eating about 1500 calories a day. And now she's almost eating 2300 calories a day. So the takeaway is just like you need to make sure you're eating enough protein, you also need to make sure you're eating enough calories. And so if you're a busy executive and your mindset has always been just eat healthy, there's a chance that you might just not be getting enough calories. Habit number three is track your workouts. Back when I looked like this, I would work out a lot. The saddest part about that is you couldn't really tell. I learned that there's actually two types of workouts. There's what I call fake workouts and real workouts. Let me explain. First and foremost, I'd rather people do something rather than nothing. I'm just talking about for the people that want to see visible changes in their body composition and be certain about that. Meaning put in the least amount of effort as possible and get a guaranteed result. This is who I'm talking about. The key way I know in which people are doing fake workouts is they will say, oh, I felt the burn or I got a sweat, so it must have been a good workout. Neither feeling has been proven to actually change your body composition. Oh my gosh, I can feel the definition already. You just shake it. My arms feel worked. It's definitely a good workout. And I say this not to like on people because I was somebody that spent probably a decade of my life doing fake workouts. 
And so now I get really sad when I see people doing fake workouts because I'm like, if you expect to get results from what you're doing and you're not, like that's wasting your life. What surprised me is that when we started working with more executives that oftentimes we're working with personal trainers like a few times a week, I would ask them, well, how does your personal trainer keep track of your workouts? And they would say, they just go off a feeling. A feeling? You want to put a bunch of time, effort, and money in and basically just hope you're gonna get a result. And this becomes especially more important the older you get, because as you age, your rate of muscle breakdown increases, meaning that it becomes harder to hang on to muscle mass. So the older you get, the more important it is to track your workouts and do real workouts based off data. So let me be clear, what are real workouts? Real workouts are workouts with a clear goal where you measure your progress week to week toward that goal. So those are the three foundational strategies I used to go from this to this and maintain it despite my crazy work schedule, business travel, client dinners, kids, all the things. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm feeling it in my chest and my biceps and my triceps. Inside the shake weight are dual moving weights called dynamic inertia that simultaneously target and engage your biceps and triceps.